Buenos dias, good morning, country collectors. Instead of a travel video today, we are switching it up. That's right. Seven months ago when we began this YouTube channel, mm -hmm. we didn't even know if it was going to work. Yeah. Yesterday, we hit 13,000 subscribers and 1 million views. <laughs> it's amazing. It is amazing. And we really wanted to thank mm -hmm. you because none of this would be possible without your support. So today, we are going to be doing a Q&A. You ask the questions and we're going to give you those answers. Before we get started, make sure to hit that subscribe button and ring the bell so you don't miss out on any of our future adventures. All right, first question. Who are you? Ooh, that's a good way to start. <laughs> My name is Adam. And I am Heidi. And together with you, we are the Country Collectors. The next question is, where are you from? Ooh, that's a good one. Where what are I, you from? Where am I from? <laughs> I am from the East Coast, New Jersey to be exact, also known as the Garden State or the armpit of America. Why did they say that? Well, when you look at the U.S., the it kind of looks like an arm on the East Coast that comes out of New Jersey is right in that middle point. And it's because it's stinky. Hey! <laughs> oh, just kidding. I grew up about 25 minutes from New York City, which was actually a really cool place to be when I was a kid because there's always something going on. There's always people around and mm -hmm. there are a ton of malls, <laughs> aka the mall capital of the United States yeah. of America. And I am from Michigan, which is, I think, the coolest state. I mean, the coolest looking state at least it looks like a mitten like this and I am from right here and if you've ever met anybody from Michigan they always put their mitts up put up your mitts <laughs> yeah. I'm from right here where are you from yeah. um, it was a wonderful place to grow up we have the four seasons and yeah I miss it I love it and if you're ever visiting the United States I definitely recommend going there and I think it's also a great mix for us as a couple because they mm -hmm. are such drastically different places yeah that when we come together, we're just a perfect pair. Yeah, when I first visited New Jersey, I was like, oh my God, the people here are like very harsh and coming the, from the Midwest. And when I went to the Midwest for the first time, everyone's like, hey, how you doing? And I'm like, you talking to me? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> So yeah, that's a little bit about where we are from. So the next question is, how did you two meet and what were your jobs before? This is definitely the most asked question. For sure. We have gotten. I'm gonna let Heidi kick this one off. So after graduating from Michigan State, go green. Go white. I moved with my best friend Julie to Vermont. We had the best winter of our lives. And when the seasons changed, she went home and I wasn't ready to go home. So my coworker, Chelsea, who if you saw our Dia de los Muertos, those video you met her there she asked Hola, Chelsea. <laughs> she asked if I wanted to move to Cape Cod in Massachusetts with her for the summer and I was like yeah sure why not so packed up put everything in her car and drove there and I'll leave it up to Adam oh thank you Heidi <laughs> when Heidi arrived in Cape Cod I had already been there for 10 years uh, I went to college at Roger Williams University in Rhode Island and studied marine biology before I went out into the job world, I was just looking for a place where I could kind of enjoy myself and experience a little bit of the world because all I'd really done was go to school. Mm -hmm. So I found my way to Cape Cod. I got a job at a restaurant as the head waiter in a seafood restaurant. And 10 years later, this angel walks in and I'm like, what the? <laughs> I literally, it was like that scene from Wayne's World where Garth sees his dream girl across the donut shop and he's just like, bing! <laughs> I knew right at that moment that I needed this girl to be in my life. So I walked right up to her and... And I was probably like this red. She probably was like that red and she didn't want anything to do with no, me. No, well, I was 22, you know, just moved to a new place. I was single, wanted to have fun in this old... 31 year old was like trying to shack up <laughs> and yeah it was what three, three months, months of yeah. courtship and finally she said yes yeah, his persistence paid off and this august it'll be 11 years so yeah we worked at that same restaurant together i was there for 10 years and he was there for 20 years crazy yeah i know so yeah but now we're doing this and but we're so happy for you know every step of the way that brought us here because without us taking like those chances you know me me leaving Michigan I would have never met you I mean all those risks mm -hmm. every decision that we have made yeah. has led right to here right now at this point speaking to you how crazy is that I know I love that all right so the next question is what led us to leave the US and travel full-time well Adam and I have since I met him 
He always he traveled before we even met. He's been to like 80 countries, right? That's right. Yeah, and together we've been to over 40, which is absolutely amazing. Amazing. So blessed. Um, and so last in we were in Mexico in winter 2020, right? Yeah, yeah. We had just sort of come away, and we were just looking to spend a month in the Yucatan, driving around. We rented a car. Mm -hmm. It was an incredible trip. And we started a YouTube channel for fun, and because you know everyone was always like, "You should start a YouTube channel." We love hearing about your travels, and we were always just like put it off, you know. But then. I like being creative, so I was like, well, why don't we just start it and see how it goes? And we had such a blast with it. Fast forward a couple of months and Adam learned that he lost his job. And so we looked at each other and we're like, well, why don't we try to just give this a shot? She, I mean, Heidi hit it right on the head there. I did lose my job, but we had actually been talking about making a change for a couple of years you know sometimes after a while something can just get stale and we had actually been offered an opportunity to run a safari park in Africa so we were actually mm -hmm. really heavily considering that and then COVID happened so it kind of dashed those plans and after losing my job we were just like let's go for it and this little angel you know bless her her heart because this is something that I've always dreamt of and she really just embraced it for me and she didn't lose her job but she left her so that we could be together and start this journey which has just been yeah, it's such been, an adventure every day it's been incredible we've learned so much about ourselves and each other and you guys and we're just so fortunate to be able to do this and like we said earlier we had no idea where this was gonna go and I know we're still small but we're hitting so many goals and I think we're doing really well yeah and again, it is because of you. So thank mm -hmm. you so, so much for all of this support and all of these lovely comments you make every week. They really do just make us so happy. Yeah, so then that leads into our next question. Do we have jobs? How do we afford traveling? <laughs> so this is our job. This is it. This is full time. When we went back home in March 2021, we packed up our stuff, sold whatever, and just hit the road. And this is what you see our bags is all we have um but and so youtube this is our this is our full-time gig luckily we were able to get monetized pretty fairly quickly yeah. yeah um we're definitely not making a ton of money it's not like a get rich quick thing no it's it's not and i mean we are basically we're living day to day we have a budget that we mm -hmm. abide by very strictly heidi is such a good budgeter she's taught me so much about budgeting and mm -hmm. she's the one that makes this all possible which we'll get into budgeting a little bit later because somebody asked about traveling on a budget and a lot of people also ask if i'm heidi sugar daddy <laughs> yeah. i wish i was heidi sugar daddy i wish what do you mean <laughs> But it's just not true. This is a, a passion that we have. And maybe someday it can turn into something much bigger that can sustain us long term. But right now we're just we're in those first stages. But I think it's hard for people to understand because when you go on vacation, a lot of the time you go for like a week or 10 days and you spend a lot of money because that's like your one big vacation. This is our life. So we're budget. Our budget is $80 a day, but sometimes we only spend 40, sometimes we spend 200. So we're spending about $1200 each per month, which is a lot less than we would be spending at home. We also have savings, um, but yes, we also have to diversify our revenue sources. So it's not only YouTube, we have our merchandise that we sell the Amazon affiliates, um, along with our Patreon, our lovely patrons. And, and a special shout out to our patrons. Yeah. You really help to make this happen yes. every single day. We appreciate you so much. And everyone who has helped us and contributed on Buy Me A Coffee platform as well. You are all just, you're making this possible and we appreciate you so much. Yes, so yeah, we are not like trust fund kids. He's not my sugar daddy, unfortunately. <laughs> unfortunately. <laughs> um, we're just, we're traveling within our means, budget traveling, and we have savings, so. Yeah. And it's also a ton of work. Oh, I mean, yeah. what you see, those finished products are, it, it's great, it's beautiful, and we are having a good time. But we film one day and the other six days are spent editing, picking music, mm -hmm. promoting, trying planning. to, planning. Heidi does a ton of the planning, so we got to give her extra credit all for that. All of the planning. Okay, fine. All of the planning. <laughs> but I mean, we work way more than we ever yeah. did when we had regular jobs. Mm -hmm. 
But yeah, yeah, this is our job, and thank you so much for supporting it. All right. This one, Ooh. it's interesting. I like it. From Ruben. I'm curious about how you handle traveling as a couple when you don't see eye to eye on something. Do you find it easy to compromise and work together even when you're stressed out? Hmm. <laughs> Thanks, Ruben. <laughs> Uh, the easy answer to this is Heidi is always right. <laughs> that is not true. <laughs> Come on. All right. Heidi is not always right. 97% of the time Heidi is right. But seriously, we are living and working together 24-7. And, you know, sometimes that can lead to some stress or a little bit of friction. But Especially luckily... Especially when you're starting something new, too. Oh, like, for sure. We didn't know anything about this platform, and we're learning, you know, every day something's thrown at us, there's problems, issues, and we're in these close quarters together, of course there's going to be problems. But yeah, we try to just... Go with the flow. Yeah. I mean, we luckily see eye to mm -hmm. eye most of the time. Yeah. There are very few things that we really disagree about, and sometimes it's just as easy as taking a 10 minute break from each other and just going for a walk, taking some deep breaths, and coming back and just realizing that we're on the same team. Yeah. Most of the time, the stress is trying to figure out what videos to make. Yeah. That's like the number one thing is every week you have to have a video, right? And it seems like it it's easy when well, you just make a video but it is it's difficult so we try to get ahead of ourselves like have like three be three videos ahead and then it lessens the stress on ourselves so That's we're yeah as this journey progresses we're learning how to cope with our stress and i think it's it's helped us a lot and i think as we get better at it mm -hmm. especially with feedback that you give us every week in the comment section mm -hmm. it really has it's helping us to be better and when we're better it's not as hard so there isn't as much stress to start with yeah and if all else fails heidi's right <laughs> <laughs> thank you all right the next one kind of feeds into it what do you both to what do you both do to keep your mental health and physical health in a good place? This is from Mark. Thank you, Mark. That is very important. So we all know how easy it is to get lost, like especially in your work. And at the beginning, like I said, when we were, we were working so hard to make this happen, we were not taking time for ourselves or each other. And it was it was pretty rough. It was hard. So And, like, I, and add on top of that, COVID. Yes. Add on top of that the stress from your families, from mm -hmm. people being sick, from your friends, from all those things. And, you know, it, it can be really rough sometimes, but everyone can have a really rough time, no matter where you are or what you do. But we, so we like sat down and talked about it, and we still do, like, and we talked about for our physical health, like every day we need to get out of the room because it's so easy to just sit there and work all day long and then you're like, oh my God, it's five o'clock. Well, it's dinner time and then you don't, you haven't moved your body all day. So we try to get out of the room at least like twice a day to go on walks and that helps us get away from the work and talk to each other about other stuff other than YouTube. Go jump in the ocean, yeah. walk in the forest. I think nature is super important mm -hmm. for your mental health. It's just something that helps to reset you when, when you get the, the scents and you get the sounds. It's just something that, mm -hmm. you know, makes you almost instantly relax. For me, that's the ocean. When I hear the waves crashing, I'm just, uh, yeah, and another thing, I started using Talkspace. If you didn't know, I lost my sister last year and my grandma and grandpa, well, all in this year, well, last year, 2021, and so I was having a really hard time, and I didn't know, like, when you're traveling, it's hard to, you can't go in person to a therapist because we're constantly moving, and one of my friends told me about Talkspace, which is this online therapy platform and so I signed up for that and it was great you do it monthly you get set up with a therapist and you can text her all day long whatever comes to mind and she'll write back to you him or her will write back to you two or three times a day it just depends and wow it it was incredible and it, it helped us a lot because I wasn't just talking to Adam about everything because we do I can pick up the phone and call my friends and stuff, but like we tend to talk to each other, you know, we're each other's sounding board, we're we're everything. Like she is my everything. But it was just nice to have 
somebody else to talk to about these issues and I wasn't putting it all on him. And, you know, I appreciate that too because it does, on top of everything else, because we all have our own stuff going yeah. on. I also use a, an app called the Calm app where you do a 10 to 15 minute meditation every day. They also offer a bunch of really cool soundscapes to help you relax your mind and fall mm-hmm. asleep at night. So that has actually helped me a lot too. 10 minutes every morning, maybe 10 minutes every night. It just really helps you to let go of things that are just stuck in your head and helps you deal with things like stress or anxiety. So that's been super helpful too. And I think like this whole journey, we're on our computers and we're on social media so much. It's not something that we have ever been used to. Yes, we've used it, but not not to this extent. So it's been a learning curve of like trying to get off of it before going to bed. And because we can be constantly working because there's always comments to answer, something to look up, something to plan. So that's something we need to work on this year. Absolutely. It's like having a cut off. And and, and and sticking to it. Mm-hmm. You know, it's time for us to sit with each other and watch a movie. It's time for us yeah. to just go and do something. It, it's really important with anything to take a break for yourself whenever you can. And yeah. I think that we're still trying to work to that part right now. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there's always something to work on, though. All right, the next one is travel tips for traveling on a budget. Like, how do you find your accommodations and cheap tours? This is a great one. Then this is my arena. Thanks to my mom, I was brought up. We were always shopping for deals. So I never like paying full price for anything. I mean, you work hard for your money. You know what I mean? And (laughs) I I don't like just like shelling it out. I love getting a good deal. It just makes me very happy. So like I said earlier, we budget like $80 a day, $40 each, but it can be, we could spend $30 one day and 150 the next day. Um, I like the 150 days. Yeah, but we've also met travelers who budget like $20 a day. And it's crazy. You're traveling for a year that's under $8,000 for your entire year. So budget, that's the one thing I want to tell you. Traveling does not have to be expensive. No, not at all. I'm sure like if we, when hopefully we get to go to Japan or Norway, it's going to be expensive and you're not going to be able to budget like how we do now, but... But I think even in places like that, you can find options that allow you to do things for a much more affordable Mm -hmm. price. But for talking about how we budget, so let's start with accommodation. So we use Booking.com. These are applications. Booking.com, Hostel World, Airbnb. Airbnb. Whenever we're going somewhere, yeah, I always go on them and I put my filters in. So how much money I want to spend, you know, the rating of the place. You don't want to stay in a dump. And you can compare them. If you're looking for a really low price, we would recommend staying in a hostel. We've stayed in dorm rooms for like $3. When we first started traveling, we were staying in rooms for $6. And And, and even in a hostel, you can get private rooms sometimes for as little as $10. Mm -hmm. So it really can be extremely affordable. And what's nice about hostels, too, a lot of them have kitchens. So you can go to the grocery store and buy all your food and cook so you don't have to spend money out at a restaurant. Um, Also, Airbnbs, you can find that as well. And if you're staying somewhere for a longer period of time... Um, th- you'll get discounts. One thing that we do that Airbnb is Probably not going to like hearing. Um, we'll check into a place on Airbnb for a couple days to see if we like it. And then if we do, we'll contact the owner directly. And most of the time when, when you do that, you'll get it a lot cheaper because you don't have to pay the, the fees, fees, the taxes, mm-hmm, all that kind of stuff. But then you aren't, um, you're not... You're not part of the, you're not like protected under the Airbnb clauses. So if something happened or something goes wrong, you're not insured or you can't contact Airbnb and say something Mm -hmm. got stolen from your room. Like Mm -hmm. it's, it's on you. Yeah. So just beware with that. Um, For transportation. So for flights, we use Skyscanner, Mm -hmm. which is an app. You go onto it say where you want to go you can even if you don't know where you want to go you can put in everywhere it's my favorite and it'll show you um 
destinations and the pricing which from cheapest yes. to most expensive all over the world so there might be a flight that goes to japan for 250 dollars just because today happens to be that yeah. day or next week so it's a very so cool we'll go option. on sky scanner and find the cheaper flight and then i always go to like if it's delta instead of booking it through like a third party on sky scanner like my trips or something i'll always go to the delta site i just feel like it's more secure you're going straight through the company it's a good tip because a lot of times it'll be a third party thing you can't change the flight if something happens right or you can't alter add or bags. add something or mm -hmm. change your seat but if you do it through the airline directly they mm -hmm. give you so many more options so you might have to pay a little bit more but you have more flexibility or if you're not worried about it just go with the third party yeah and then for transportation we always try to take local transport like buses it's so much it's so much more affordable. And you would be so surprised, honestly. And you get a richer experience, too. I, I mean, that is 100% true. Mm -hmm. uh, what I was just going to say is that, you know, I think like at home in the States, we're like, oh, the bus, the bus, the bus. Here in Mexico, specifically, the buses are way nicer than the ones that we yeah. have at home. They have TVs. They're playing shows during the pandemic. They have dividers mm -hmm. between the seats. It's just super great. And the people that you meet on the buses are so nice as well. And, event, and usually when they stop, someone will come around with like little snacks and drinks you can buy while you're His on the favorite. bus. I'm a snacker and a drinker, people. What do you want me to do? We know that. Oh, and then we could talk a little bit about credit cards. We're not like super credit card savvy, but we I have the Chase Sapphire Preferred and Adam has the Reserve. His is a lot more expensive. It's like $500 for the year, but you get a $300 tax credit or travel, travel credit, credit, sorry. So when you spend $300 in travel, they give you that right back. So then that puts it down to $200 that he's paying. But the money that he gets back from traveling pays for that. Plus you earn so much more. I mean, it does stuff like it's given us a priority pass. So whenever we go to an airport, international or domestic, if they have a lounge, we can go to like 95% of them mm -hmm. for no cost. And while you're there, your drinks and your food are free. So that is paying for itself. We also get insurance on our cars, mm -hmm. primary insurance. So you don't have to pay for insurance. This is not and, true in Mexico. Mexico, yeah. you have to get insurance, but around the world, you use this credit card to pay for your rental car, and you don't even have to get the insurance because they cover you up to $100,000. It also insures your flights and your luggage, all that sort of stuff, so you don't have to buy extra insurance when you're purchasing your airfare. It does, a, it, and, and that is just like the, the tip, tip of yeah. the iceberg. There is so much that goes into it. So if you are interested, definitely go check it out. We're not being paid to tell you no. about this. It's just what we use. But we make money. I put everything on my credit card, I try to, and then I make, I make money using my credit card, but you have to be, sh sh you have to be sure you have the funds, don't just use it like willy nilly, like I pay it off every single every month. month. Yeah, I love like little budget hacks, um, so if you have any more questions about budget traveling, just ask us, I'm sure maybe one day we can make a little video I about it. I think we it. should make an, I mean if you want to see another video with some more of our budget hacks or just budget hacks. Give us a comment down below and we'll see what we can do. The next question is, what camera gear do you use? Oh, this one is my arena. Heidi's the budget. I'm the tech guy. <laughs> uh, so when we first started out last year, we were using an iPhone 9 to do all of our filming and also doing all of our editing on an iPad Pro. It was so easy, though. <laughs> it was so easy, but also so difficult yeah. and very limiting. Limiting, that's a, yeah. Uh, when we got back and we actually started our full-time journey, we purchased two GoPro Hero 9s mm -hmm. with vlog set up so we can get better sound. We also use a small Mavic drone to get some of those beautiful aerial shots. And we got a Sony a7 III, which is great for in a lot of situations, but not something that we're using primarily because mm -hmm. it's just bulky and doesn't really allow us the flexibility we like to use or the waterproof. And when you're walking around, like, you know, we don't want to be walking around with thousands of dollars this camera where people are like "Ooh, you know it sticks out like a sore thumb and also when we're filming people you can put a gopro up and it just seems like a phone like people are natural once you bring out a big camera everyone freezes up and the whole scene gets weird so yeah we just we like the versatility of the gopro oh for sure and uh we're also using a iPhone 9, uh, an iPhone 12 Pro now, which also helps out with some of the stuff because again, oh, people... and you just got the Osmo. And I just got an Osmo 4, but we haven't used that yet. Yeah. But yeah, we try to just keep it simple. Simpler, the better. We know a lot of people have asked us about our setup, and I think 
even for us, like when we, like a few years back when we were traveling, you know, you worry so much about the gear, but the thing is you just need to do it. Like, don't worry about, oh, I can't start my channel until I get this or get that. No, you can, you can start today, start with a phone. You can do it, like that. the first step is, is just doing it. Yeah, I, I don't know who said it, but the best camera for a situation is the camera you have yeah. right now. Mm -hmm. Because who cares if you're in a week, you're gonna have the camera, if you missed out on this once in a lifetime thing. You know, like we did the Dia de Muertos, it was absolutely incredible. If I had not had the GoPro, I would have used my iPhone 9 yeah. that I had back then because it was so important to capture it when we were there doing it. Yeah. Remember, you can do this too if you want. Yes, all right. Oh, I got this question yesterday from Ashley and I love it. Where did you travel that changed your perspective or life? So. Wow, Ashley. <laughs> yeah, thank you for that. Um, I think like every, every day we travel, we definitely learn something about ourselves, but my life changed on our first big trip together. We went to Southeast Asia for four months, Thailand, Laos, Cambodia, Vietnam, you know, that whole circuit. And it was just, Everything was eye-opening. I came from Michigan. You know, I had never been to Asia or seen any anything really, like, experienced anything like this. I saw poverty for the first time, like, real poverty that just, like, shakes your core and, like, oh, God, it breaks you. Yeah. Like, I'm getting choked up now. You just, like, fall into a puddle and you just cry and cry and cry because how could the world be so cruel, you know? And um, I remember when we first got to Bangkok, like when we first flew in, we got into our taxi and what did the car have in front of us? Oh man, it was a pickup truck. It was like a hundred degrees out. It was a pickup truck filled with skinned cows. cows. And John Denver was playing. <laughs> and our cab driver was blasting, <laughs> country road, yeah. take me It was home. just like everything was like an assault on my senses, but like in the best way. We, when we were in Vietnam, we were riding our bikes like through this little village and it started pouring. And we're, pouring is an understatement. It was like buckets. Like you couldn't even open your eyes. There was so much water pouring down. And we're like down. huddled under this little tree and this little lady comes out of her bamboo hut. Shit, hut and waves us over and sits us down in our house and she goes back to doing what she's doing. And it was just like, you know, like growing, growing up back home, we think, what's success? It's the white picket fence, the car, the job, this and that. And... But I never really felt like that happiness. And then we went to places where people had next to nothing, but what they had was pure joy. And what they had was community. And like when we were in Thailand, I remember, sorry, I'm jumping all over the place, no, but please. they just keep like coming back. Like we went to our friends for Christmas, Dao and Klaus, and it wasn't just their house, like where they lived on their little road, everyone was best friends like all the neighbors were there it was a block party it was amazing and i remember someone i was like oh my gosh you and your neighbors are all friends and they're like what do you mean and i'm like back home in some places like neighbors you don't talk to them or you don't know them and they couldn't believe it they were like what are you talking about you don't know your neighbor like why and i'm like it's just different we're like busy and you have jobs and you have stuff to do and they're like Oh, we do too but it, but it's like they have they put way more emphasis on family and their relationships community. with other people yeah and it was it that was just very eye-opening I think when you travel it definitely humbles you changes you completely I am a totally 100% different person than I was before and Material things don't matter. Don't let your possessions possess you. Yeah, it's so true. So yeah, travel has just, it's changed everything about me, my entire being, and I'm so grateful for that. I, I mean, I, I couldn't, I don't even know if I can add anything to something as eloquent as Heidi just said. <laughs> you know. Wait, what we'll talk about in Vietnam, the crabs. Oh, right. Um, <laughs> So we were in Vietnam riding our bikes around, uh, our, riding our motorbike around, and we came to this little jungle with a hike into the forest, and there was this waterfall, beautiful, stunning waterfall, and we hear this laughter. 
while we're down on the bottom. So we climb up to the top, and there is a family of 15 Vietnamese people raging in age from like three up to, I don't know, their 60s. I'll put in a photo of it right here. And they... Where they saw us and they instantly said, come, come, join us. And two of them were actually lived in the United States and had a nail salon. So they were, they were speaking to us and translating everything. Mm -hmm. They had a sit down in the waterfall with them and they had garbage bags, like hefty, hefty, hefty garbage bags filled with steamed crabs. crabs. <laughs> and they just started handing us crabs and crabs mm -hmm. and they had rice wine it was like their family reunion and they hadn't seen each other in 10 years but they had us join them because we were by ourselves so we ate mm -hmm. and we laughed and we drank and we just hung out in this waterfall and then they insisted that we come back to their house with them and then they insisted that they take us out to dinner and then they insisted that we go squid fishing yeah we went out on their boat at night and we, they taught us how to squid fish and it was just like who does this? Yeah, just like you picked up some random strangers yeah. in a place where tourism is normal. It's not like we were in some far-flung place that they've never seen tourists before, but they, they were just so kind and, right down to the core. And it's something that we've learned so much in Mexico too. Like Mexicans want to share everything. They want to share their country, their traditions, their culture. Their, they have this pride, and I think that's the same in Vietnam, all over Asia. People, they have this pride. They want you to taste their food, their dishes. They want you to smell stuff. They want you to just have the best time in their country. And I think it goes beyond just having a good time. You know, when we're on a bus here in Mexico or in any in any situation where we're, they know that we are not speaking Spanish fluently, they will come up and check on us. They'll be like, this is your stop. Get off here. <laughs> this is the way to go. I can get you a taxi if you need it. People are just so kind. Mm -hmm. And where I come from in the United States, we don't even say hi to people when they're walking. To, it's a joke when people are like, how you doing? And you're like, how am I doing? How you doing? <laughs> you know, like people don't, people just don't have that connection. And I think that's one of the things Heidi hit on before, that when you have less Sometimes it means that you have more because when we have so much and we focus on our house and our car and all those things, we worry about that stuff. We're worried about what people are judging us for. We're worried about if people think we're important enough. When you come to a place like this or in a developing nation, people, because they have little, they have to lean on each other for help. They have to lean on each other for support in everyday stuff and it creates this closeness. You have never seen a smile or heard a laugh like you do in a country where people don't yeah. have so much because when they laugh, it's everything they have to give. It's it's the love that they are sharing with you. They, they barely have two things to eat and they'll give you one of them mm -hmm. because they don't want yeah. you to be hungry and they don't yeah. expect anything in return. And that is something that travel has changed in me. It's changed my perspective about what's important in life mm -hmm. what's important and that's it's, it's even helped me to love Heidi more or love the people that are in my life more because now I know what's important I know mm -hmm. it doesn't matter if I have a fancy car I know it doesn't matter if I'm wearing my best t-shirt all I own are t-shirts people I'm sorry if I don't <laughs> dress up enough for you but it's traveling that has made us the couple that we are and we're just so grateful to be able to share this with you because we want you to get out there if you can't get out of your comfort zone you don't have to stay at the hotels I mean, be smart, it, make the right decisions, but make sure that you give it a shot because if you want to be changed by traveling, you have to open yourself up to that change. <laughs> that was long-winded. It was long-winded, but I'm very passionate yeah. or we're very passionate about our travel. All right, next one is, what is your all-time favorite travel adventure? Ooh. That's tough. That is a tough one. I'll try to keep this one a little bit shorter. I mean, <laughs> So many are incredible, but one we did recently, we drove across South Africa from Johannesburg to Cape Town and then into Namibia and Botswana and Zimbabwe, I think, right? Well, we, yeah, no, we took, I think from Botswana, we took a car over to Victoria Falls. Yes, uh, and, and we took a helicopter ride over the falls. It was incredible. Mm -hmm. My favorite part of this trip was I didn't know how to drive a stick shift. <laughs> before we got there. So we arrived at Johannesburg Airport at like 5 a.m. 5 a.m. I watched two YouTube videos oh and then we started driving and that adventure is a long story. I wish we would have started our YouTube channel like, <laughs> oh my God, 10 years ago. Oh I think man. I was stuck at a light for like 15 minutes. And there were like 40 cars lined up behind us just like honking their horn. Because like, he kept stalling <laughs> out and like couldn't make the turn. It was like my, it was like 20, it was I'm like sweating, an hour like, into thinking it. about yeah. that. 
What about you? Um, I think mine was probably we did a 19 day live aboard across the Banda Sea in that Indonesia. Was awesome. It was yeah, it was unbelievable. We were on board with I think five other people. And it was it was super relaxed. Like we would go scuba diving during the day, like just Adam and I, to sites that we had never been to. Or we they saw, had never been to. Yeah, we saw hammerhead sharks. We'd go to islands, and the locals would come out in their dugout canoes and just like rest their feet on the boat and just look at us because it was like watching TV, right? What are these people do? These foreigners doing here? We actually got caught up in a big storm, and we ended up on an island where a lot of the younger people, like less. And 15 had never even seen a foreigner someone that was not from indonesia so to them everyone was just standing on the the <laughs> beach staring as we and didn't they they came up on the boat once and we had like a fish id was that yeah that was there and the, and the guy was like this is our fish we have this fish in our water why is why my do you have fish a picture of our fish in, in your, your book, book. <laughs> yeah because he didn't understand that this fish exists other places besides yeah. right here but that's another great example of when you are from a place and you don't have that outside world to come in and change mm -hmm. things or make you judge or worry about what you don't have it's your entire world so he mm -hmm. actually believed these fish were his they were their fish yeah. this island's own fish yeah it's incredible and then favorite experience in mexico Ooh, again. Diving, diving with the whale sharks and oh, Isla Mujeres. man those whale sharks i i still cry i still tear up when i watch the scene where we drop into the water and the mantas and the whale sharks are there i'm also going to throw in there the dia de muertos in oaxaca city yeah. which was just wow Incredible. it really life-changing this one says money aside what are your top three must-see cities as a couple and why this is from my friend ryan from high school Ooh. um so we listed a few here. We haven't been to like a lot of cities, I feel like, but sort of like places. Well, Barcelona. Incredible food. The only music, place I've been people. to in Europe and wow. Yeah. And it's pronounced Barcelona. 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 Yeah. It's very romantic as a couple. Um, Ubud, Ubud, Ubud in Bali. Oh, man. We, we love it there. Absolutely in love with Indonesia mm -hmm. in general, but Ubud is just, it's I mean, the like atmosphere, a... it's so relaxing. You can go to the rice fields, get $4 massages. <laughs> get fresh fruit, sit on the beach. The people. Yeah. Yeah. And then Oaxaca City. Yeah, absolutely. Oaxaca City just absolutely blew us mm -hmm. away that first time. We went there for a week and we stayed for seven, yeah. I think, and last December. And we're not December. city people. No. So it just goes to show you, like, it's, yeah, we loved it. Yeah. It's incredible. Culture, food, people. All right, our next question is from Melissa. It says, aren't you scared to travel in Mexico? Which is a question that we get a lot as well. And I, and we, even if if we're in South Africa, we get that. If we're in, if we're in Thailand, Thailand, anywhere we go, people ask, aren't you scared? Because we're predisposed back home to be scared to leave our bubble. And I think it's something that the government and the media, they do on purpose. They want to keep us home. I, I agree. I mean, even you hear car stories about Cancun. You hear, like, we're, we're in Cancun. We don't stay in the resort area. We don't stay in the hotel zone. We stay in the town. We walk around at night. We eat in local mm -hmm. restaurants. We eat street food. And we meet people almost every day that are just so nice and For sure, polite. there's inherent risk wherever you go. Yes, there was a shooting just here in Puerto Morelos and in Tulum and dealing with cartel. Like, Yes, stuff is going on. We're not blind to all that. But it's but, not like yeah. we don't feel scared when we're going out. I mean, bear in mind, Mexico is huge. Mm -hmm. So when you think about like, did a shooting happen in somewhere in California yesterday? Did a shooting happen in New York or Chicago? I mean, we have absolutely dangerous places yeah. too. We have poverty. We have problems w with all kinds of things, just like all these other countries have. But we just tend to see in the news the very little bit that comes from, oh, something happened in Mexico, something happened in South Africa. Mm -hmm. And I'm not saying there's not dangerous people and there's not crime that does happen. You need to be careful. You need to look out for yourself. But that's true at home as well. I'm from New Jersey, and I would not change that for anything because it's made me who I am today. And it's also prepared me to be out in the world because truthfully, there have been very few places I've ever been that have scared me more than New Jersey. You know, we have ghettos, we have gangs, we have gun violence, 
it, it's a reality of life every day. Am I scared for my life every day? No. Just like when I travel, I'm not scared for my life every day. And the thing is, like, when you're coming here, just if you're not buying drugs or getting involved, I know some people are just, unfortunately, in the wrong places at the wrong time. You just need to be safe, have your wits about you. Don't walk on the beach at night drunk with your best jewelry on. Like, just practice caution like you would back home. Just... Don't be dumb. Yeah, don't be, don't flash cash yeah. around. I see it all the time. You don't have to wear your, you can have a gold Rolex. It's okay. You don't have to wear it when you go to the beach. Yeah. If you're trying to show people, it comes back to what we were talking about at home. We're so concerned with what other people perceive us as being because success is having money that people that don't have anything see you with that success and you become a target. Mm -hmm. So don't make yourself a target. Just go out, enjoy yourself, be polite, and people will be polite to you. Yeah, so... We are not scared to travel in Mexico, but we do, we practice caution like anywhere. Well, this is a good one. What is one thing that shocked you about Mexico that you were unaware it had or thought may not exist in it? Whether that be technology, infrastructure, etc. This is from the Chango space. Oh. So I think the first thing that we're shocked about is how much we love it. Uh, I mean, again, I, I, I don't necessarily feel like I have to apologize to Mexico, but I'd been here three or four times before this past year when we started traveling, and it was always to Cancun. It was always to a resort. And, you know, I just had that very general, like, oh, yeah, it's cool. It's just resorts. There is so much well, more to Mexico. Well, than... I don't even think that we know back home that there's states in Mexico. Yes, there are. Do you know that there's 32 states? <laughs> I'll say I didn't know that. 32 yeah. states. I didn't know either. Yeah. And we're just the neighbor to the north, and we don't learn anything about it. It's like... It's so true. And beyond just there being states, like, I remember, I, I feel like I'm always telling people, oh, the U.S. has two oceans. The the U.S. has deserts. The U.S. has mountains. Mexico yeah, has, all, two, of has all of it, too. They have deserts. They have oceans. They have incredible mountain ranges. Yeah. They have beaches like you have never seen. They're mm -hmm. on the Caribbean. They're on the Pacific. It's just... And the food. Yeah. If you didn't know this about me then you obviously have not been watching our channel. I love to eat, and the food in Mexico, I mean, I'm, I, I apologize, Mexico, because I thought that... Burritos, chimichangas, nachos. And hard tacos. Don't yeah. embarrass yourself and come here and order a hard <laughs> yeah. taco, people. They, do, they don't exist. They only have soft tacos, yeah. and they are the most delicious things you will ever eat. And I think, Adam, coming from New Jersey, we were talking about the malls. Oh, my goodness. I can't <laughs> believe I almost forgot. Their malls kick our malls' yeah. butts everywhere i've been in we've been to 48 states yeah. 47 states yeah. and we've been not to a mall in every state but we've been to a lot of malls and new jersey is the mall capital of america Here they have ice skating rinks ice skating rinks they have the biggest i love the claw game the biggest claw game oh my I've goodness ever seen. it's the like claw was like this big if we have a picture we'll put it in here it's like a 15 or 20 foot tall claw game. Like even in Cancun, I don't know how many malls. There's so many malls and they're so nice. And and the inf like the infrastructure, the mm -hmm. buses are really good. Yes, there are some bad buses, but you can get everywhere for so cheap. And yeah. again, the people are so helpful, even if they don't speak a word of English. As long as you ask them first, like, hablas inglés, no, todo bien. And then try and explain as best you can. Point, use your phone app to explain what you need to on like Google Translate, and they will go out of their way. The cabs, they have Uber. Yeah. They have Uber's little sister called Didi. Mm -hmm. They deliver food here. Anything that you can imagine mm -hmm. you have at home, they have here, and sometimes even more. And I can't wait to go to Mexico City growing up it was always like the most dangerous place and i know there are dangerous spots there but we have friends that live there and who have visited there multiple times and they said that it is world class and i cannot wait to go there and just be shocked about it go to xochimilco and show it to all of you with all that you've experienced how do you go back to a normal life <laughs> i think you know everyone my normal is different than your normal, and his normal is different than his normal. And our normal might be different from your normal. Yeah, and we've never honestly lived a normal life, so, and I don't think so that... True. So we can't really go back to something like that. Yeah, you can't like go that. back to something you never had before, and I think the easiest answer would be is that we would just, even if this doesn't work mm -hmm. out, and we are super happy and, and really planning that it is going to work yeah. out, is that we would just find something else mm -hmm. that would suit us, find something else that would keep us active every day, that would make us happy to be waking up and going to. And I know 
I want to touch on how like so many people say how lucky we are to be doing this and how blessed we are and but like every everyone who I know who's living a normal life too back home like I'm so proud of you for where you are and how far you've come and you know we're just we're on different paths in life and no one's path is better than yours right or wrong yeah. if you are happy with the life you're mm-hmm. living if you're the person that you want to be we are so grateful mm-hmm. to have you in our community and if you are looking maybe to start traveling and you want to sell your stuff or just like go on a go on a travel and experience the world message us we're here to help you sort Absolutely. of achieve those goals and because we want you to experience it and this life isn't for everyone just yeah. like maybe the life you're living isn't for everyone mm-hmm. but it doesn't make either one less important yeah. or less fulfilling and we just want you to know that we're here for you no matter what yes and last but not least, what country is our next one after Mexico? This is from the Vegan Voyagers. Hey, guys. We have gotten this question a lot, and people are like, you're the country collectors. Why aren't you collecting any more countries? And it's like, I feel like every state in Mexico is it's like its a own different country. country. And with the climate of the world right now and COVID, honestly, it's just like... We feel safe here. There's so much to do, so much to see. We're having a wonderful time. We love experiencing everything we can with border restrictions and all that kind of changing all the time. It's just, it's been nice to be able to start our channel here and watch ourselves grow. We have a lot of Mexican subscribers who we absolutely love. So we're just kind of like rolling, you know, that snowball effect, going with it, learning our Spanish, and just enjoying the whole process here. I mean, and and this isn't a sprint. We're planning on being around Mm -hmm. for a while, so we are going to be traveling, and when we start to go, we are going to be go, go, go. Mm -hmm. But right now, Mexico is just absolute perfection. Mm -hmm. Muchas gracias, amigos y familia. Mexico, you have touched us so deeply. Mm -hmm. The way that you've opened up and shared your culture with us, the way that you make us feel so welcome, we cannot thank you enough. And we are so grateful to be able to share your country with the world. And thank you for the support you give us on our channel as well. Your comments really, really make us feel special. We do. So, yeah. We can't wait to travel the world a bit more and hopefully doesn't go back into lockdown but if it does we're gonna be right here in Mexico showing you everything and I just wanted to say something else very quickly traveling doesn't mean you have to go across the world you could travel to the next town to have an experience you could travel to the next state where you live you can go anywhere and have a beautiful experience as long as you open yourself up to it so maybe you can't travel right now because of the pandemic maybe you're stuck at home Go and check out something new. Go see some friends. Go and have an experience. It will make you better. Yes. Well, I think that ends it. Thank you so, I know. That was so much fun. It really was. Thanks so much for the questions. We hope you enjoyed getting to know us a bit better. I know we enjoyed sharing ourselves with you so much. Yeah, so if you have any more questions, leave them down in the comments. Hopefully we'll do another Q&A soon or- Definitely. Or maybe even a live. Ooh, that yeah. sounds fun. We've never done one of those. <laughs> so if you enjoyed this video, please give us a big thumbs up, subscribe, and don't forget to- Ling, 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 ling the bell. We'll see you- Next time. Adios.